I don't know if I'm going to make an intro. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Maybe this is the intro, but if I don't make an intro, this is the intro. Welcome back, everybody. It's been a long time since we've uh, done the Friday flow, but we're here, we're back, we're better than ever, we're older, we're wiser, we're a little grayer, and here we go. We have a new format. We're not going to really just show you a bunch of new products. Uh, we're going to do a little bit more deep diving into just a, a couple select themes, a couple of select articles. And then also we've opened it up to Woe Flowers to ask us some questions. And so we've chosen a few to go over. Um, so we're going to open up with some articles, just two. We're just going to do two themes today. Uh, the first one is from Will. So Will, I'll let you uh, introduce the article and the theme here. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jordan. It's great to be back at the Friday Flow. Um, we're flowing, we're rolling, we have new technology as everything keeps advancing. So, uh, you know, that is part of very much the theme. I don't know if you saw this when it came out, it was a few, few days ago or a few weeks ago now, but New York Times had a article on New York restaurants and starting to use virtual remote employees to help with the front of house of a restaurant. So if you actually check out the article, you'll see the images, people actually zooming in into the front of house, uh, uh, house at a restaurant is pretty wild when you first see it, I suppose, but you're going to be there ordering food and you're being helped along with, um, your, your journey. So like in this, I guess, in this example, um, someone is checking in at a restaurant and they're actually talking with a live agent and the agent is not around uh, in New York. I think for a number of these, they're saying that they're in the Philippines. We know how good um, the, the employees uh, and contractors are in the Philippines. So I completely uh, see why they would go there for, for help. <clears throat> but I think it's talking to us kind of wider um, piece around there's stricter labor laws now in America, there's stricter immigration laws in America. And so how do people evolve? How do businesses stay in business when costs keep rising and things like that? So I thought it was a super interesting way of doing it. Using Zoom, we've become very much a democratized workforce. I, I was actually looking at the data, I think for Woflow as a company, we started in San Francisco, right? Uh, we had our team all here when we first began began now we're about 50 or so employees and contractors actually only 20 percent of us are now in the bay area so we've massively seen this change happen um o over zoom and re remote work and, and being able to work all over the world and so i think this is an interesting take we've seen kind of in the 90s and early 2000s a lot of outsourcing of customer calls to call centers and this is kind of like that next evolution of that right it's it's got the the video calls now happening more of that front of house. What did you think about this, Jordan? Yeah, I mean, I thought it was super interesting. Not the first time I've heard of this. Definitely the first time I heard of this uh, this company. Um, as you can see here, here's a, a obviously a picture of it. It's an interesting layout. I didn't expect it to be in a picture frame with like a regular, uh, you know, video camera just like placed on top. Could have been a little more elegant, but it's cool. Um, I was thinking more about what is the impetus behind it? Is it cost or is it supply uh, of the actual employees? I know here in San Francisco during COVID, there was just a massive, massive shortage of uh, workers. Like no one was interested in working at any of the restaurants. And so uh, to a degree, I feel like they wouldn't, they would pay more for this at that moment because of the supply uh, but now that we've kind of like evened things out and now supply has come back, this is definitely a cost play in my mind. Um, I've never seen it in stores, but I have seen not remote, but robot employees at drive throughs So I also looked up a couple um, old articles about that. Um, and that's obviously pure margin, but also there's a supply issue. It's, it's hard to hire and maintain these employees. Um, that started back in 2005. They were starting to do that, mostly at uh, fast food drive throughs But I thought that was super interesting that it's been basically 20 years and it hasn't really picked up. So I'm curious if this is going to be 
uh, a theme that sticks or not. Because again, it's been 20 years and, and I don't see this. It's not a ubiquitous part of my life at these uh, restaurants, but I still think it's super interesting. High mixed reviews. Um, obviously some people love it. The uh, owners of the restaurants, it's an option for them. The, you know, some people, some patrons of the restaurants maybe like it. It seemed like they were a little bit more swayed to not liking the, it was just kind of a weird vibe. Um, but then there's a lot of people, I know uh, I put a little, I read a little quote here. Um, Chief of staff of the Restaurant Opportunities Center United, just kind of a, an organization. They obviously are pushing for higher minimum wage. And this to them is, uh, you know, a huge shift to the opposite direction of what they're trying to do for workers here in the U.S. Um, another interesting piece of this article that I read and is very relevant to Woflow is um, the virtual assistant couldn't help a reporter order a sandwich without cheese on a touchpad menu. Uh, the assistant said, please, you have to go next door and talk to a real person because I can't help you. So this is clearly a divide, a, a still a divide between virtual workers or you know people that are not actually on site and being able to accommodate everything. Woflow is trying to help with that as well, right? We're, the better the data, the more flexible and the more uh, usable that these digital systems will be. But at this moment, it's still required that there is somebody on site to kind of take over. All right, moving on to the next topic. This is one that I chose, very similar theme. This is AI in recruiting. Oh, so a couple, uh, a couple of companies have reached out to me over the last year or so about uh, using AI for recruiting. It seems like a very obvious uh, place for AI. We've had we've had in-house recruiters in the past. We've used um, outsourced recruiters. We've recruited ourselves. We know it's a big pain in the ass, and a lot of it is just sifting through hundreds of resumes. That's that's once you get the resumes. Even before you get the resumes, how do you reach out? How do you figure out who you reach out to? What does the reach out look like? How do you communicate with all of these people? It's a lot, it's a lot. Uh, and so this company, uh, Brain Trust, just launched, I believe this week. Um, I'll do a quick little video demo of what they do, just so we can get a, a sense here. Instead, Brain Trust Air takes over and does this for you. All 93 are scheduled and live interviewed via video over the next 24 hours in parallel. The questions are generated by AIR, but can be tailored to meet the client's requirements. Hi, Rana. Welcome. I'm Brain Trust AIR, and I'll be conducting your interview for the senior front-end engineer role at Reddit. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me. Let's get started. Can you share a little about yourself and your background? Of course, I have eight years of front-end engineering experience, with my last three at a pre-IPO startup as a senior engineer, working on projects ranging from full front-end rebuilds to launching our first mobile app. The next day, the hiring manager is presented with the best five candidates based on qualifications and that live interview. Because- All right, you get the point. <laughs> uh... What, what's your what's your first thought on, on that? I'm just curious. My first off the off the dome is dystopian for sure. Um, yes, it's it is interesting. It, to your point, we've seen a lot of these kind of products on the market. This is definitely an interesting take on that. It feels like this certainly will happen more and more in the future. I think even to a lesser degree, maybe two years ago, LinkedIn. If you use that for for recruiting, they actually have an option where you can ask a question and someone can respond with a video. So it enables you to watch a few videos rather than needing to sit through a 30 minute call. So it, it, it's interesting in that regard, especially for some roles where you just get so many candidates. We have a couple of roles when whenever we post it, we get literally a hundred a day. So in that regard, we're, we're being a little biased because we're just spending two minutes per resume. And then we're trying to speak to you know the top 10 or top 20 that we can, we can talk to. This feels like it's going to enable a broader swath of that first pass, which is which is net beneficial, right, for the for the candidates. On the other side, 
half, I imagine like half of the, the initial interview is also selling the company back to the person. And so I think we're a long way before the, the bots are going to be able to sell the company uh, back to the, the uh, person rather than the hiring manager that we have. But, you know, maybe we, you save that for the second interview and, and this becomes the more routine uh, for first first. Pe- Hey, what, what do you yeah. think about it? Are we going are we going to use it Jordan for uh, for engineers? I was going to try it for fun. I was very curious. I mean the dream is just all of a sudden you wake up and you have five really well qualified applicants and have already done like an initial screening and you go from there. I'm thinking in one year you're going to have your own AI avatar. This per this this what is it? Brain trust air is going to be video interviewing your AI avatar that already has all of your information. So they're just going to be cross pollinating uh, their own information that they've gotten from, you know, whoever's running these AIs It's basically just becoming an API. So at the end of the day, you're basically just like the intermediary is just two AIs talking to each other. Anyway, I'm getting yeah. ahead of myself. We- but <laughs> we didn't we didn't get into that on the on the last one, but that was going to be my point as well. Uh, we, you know, we've moved from the analog days of like pressing one for reservations, press two for Spanish, uh, to it being widely accepted that there's kind of an AI chatbot that's being used. In fact, Pop Menu, one of our customers, does that for um, booking appointments for their customers. And they see a, a big upside to it. But to that point, you're going to start having the the bots also calling those numbers, and so they should just interact over API. Yeah, that's why it feels uh, like we're going definitely down the dystopian uh, route a little bit with this. Uh, but to your, to your point, you can wake up and get the five most qualified candidates without needing to sift through things. That feels really uh, hyper efficient for, for the company and the hiring company. And if it becomes standard, you know, it's a little bit like dating, right? The, 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 the dating apps are also kind of moving more and more in this direction as well. Um, we're, we're way beyond just getting a resume today for a, for a job. So it'd be yeah. very interesting to see where it heads and what actually picks up leverage in some of these, these bigger organizations. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah. My, so my thought on it was, you were spot on, on, on the point of like trying to sell the company to the employee first, first and foremost, I would probably be wildly turned off if this was my initial process to a new company. So I don't think I would go forward with the interview, but you also said, which was a good point, maybe this is how they all become. So maybe this is just the new norm. Uh, I don't know. It's it's hard to say. I'd be very curious to see. I know, I mean, this also allows huge scale of outreach. And so just how much spam is being thrown out there right now? Probably a ton. I know a bunch of people on my team tell me about every day they get, you know, LinkedIn messages. I've gotten a couple of ridiculous messages that are like very clearly, they just misread my LinkedIn profile. Back when I was in high school and college, I was a gymnastics coach. And so it's still on my LinkedIn. And sometimes it's very clear that the AI reads all the way down, understands that I was a gymnastics coach, puts some gymnastics puns in there into the like wording. So they try to make it very relatable to me. And I just like crack up. I think I sent a, one of yeah. these out, which is a while ago. I was dying. Uh, but yeah, I think, I think it's interesting. I'm going to try it and I will report back um, in a future Friday flow. For Please sure. do. And then maybe, maybe we can get Nick to use some of the, the sales versions of that as well to see yeah. what that is as well. Um, oh, yeah, I like that. But yeah, are we just ending up with just needing to become so much more aware of just the amount of volume that now AI can generate from sales or from hiring or whatever else is it going to become the new advertisements in, in the TV that now no one pays attention to. Now this is the, the next wave of, of it for, yes. for businesses. hundred <laughs> percent. I mean, that's where I already use, like if you're using a spam filter, that is using AI. It's not using LLM. Actually, it might be using LLMs now, but I know it's using a pretty hardcore spam filter. So you are already using your LL, your AI to filter out other AI, so it's just it's just a big battle. Um, okay, great. Let's move on to Q and A. We have two questions that we're going to dive into. I, I realize we're already like we were trying to do a nice like 10, 20 minutes. We're already like twenty five minutes in, and we have haven't even gotten past the first part. So let's see if we can do this in a nice concise fashion. The first question is awesome, and it's coming from Bonin. 
And it is, to what extent will vision-based menu extraction change current market and competition? Huge question. Who, who wants to kick this off? Yeah, yeah, I think you should kick it off. I, uh, I think it feels very engineering heavy. I like it. I like it. Uh, I will... I will use it. I'm going to use a a previous story, almost an analogous story that I think of when I think of this problem. And that is the blockbuster and Netflix problem or the story. We've, we as Woflow in the very beginning basically came in as displacing outsourcing companies. That was really the beginning of us transcribing restaurant menus. We became an outsourcing company like a futuristic outsourcing company, just so we could take market share, knowing that we are positioned much better to be able to use technology in the future to provide the value to our customers. Just like Netflix came in and started selling DVDs, they did it in a mildly more futuristic manner. It was sending them via mail, um, but it was still futuristic, but they positioned themselves as a technology play, right? That was like, that's what they were doing, but ultimately they were providing the same value to the customers. You're getting a DVD or you're getting a, a VHS. Actually, I don't know if they did VHS. I've seen ourselves the same way. We need to always embrace the latest technology because if we don't, somebody else will. We know this is coming. Uh, GBT4 right now is the worst it'll ever be, right? It's like. It's not going to get any worse. It's only going to get better. And vision-based menu extraction, which is what uh, most of you have seen us working on uh, launching very shortly, auto vision, is just that. It's being able to do a full transcription of a, of a physical paper or JPEG menu without any humans, right? It's just, we've, it, it's been the dream from the beginning. How does it change our market? It changes it a lot. Like we're not sitting here saying that this is not going to do anything to the business. Like, we need to be at the forefront of what technology is capable of doing with this type of technology. And by, by doing that, we are going to be partially cannibalizing some of this business, right? And if we don't do it, then we're not going to cannibalize some of our business. We're just going to lose all the business. So we need to make sure that we are the ones bringing this to market, even if it means lowering costs and lowering revenue that we get from this specific business, we will gain it back and then some by being the sticky partner that's able to accomplish all of this. So that's really my, my thoughts, my philosophy on, on AutoVision. And I've known this has been, like, this has been the dream from the beginning. We're, we're not sitting here like, like, oh shit, here it comes. It's like, oh yes, here it is. Let's, let's be the ones to do this. We already have the distribution. So, so that's really, those are my, my, uh, my thoughts. Anything else to add on your end? Yeah, I think that's all super valid and I agree. And well, I'm sure on this show you talk about AI constantly because that is truly the driving force to a lot of business efficiency. It's also the biggest threat, the biggest opportunity. I'd say the one area that I, I know that will make up, uh, you know, if we reduce our per unit revenue that we charge, uh, because we're now trying to, to keep the business that we have today and there's going to be lower price competitors that are going to be AI first going going after our, our customers. There's a whole b bunch of customers in lower cost markets that we are currently not competitive with it with our current pricing model. I'm thinking Southeast Asia, likes of Grab and Gojek we don't work with, Latin America, Rappi, iFood, DD Food. These are all businesses that we know about, we speak to, they have as much if not higher volume than any of our existing customers here in in North America or in Europe, but whenever we've gone to them, we just couldn't get to a price point that would make sense where we can still make a margin and we can we can sell. So the more development and advancement we make in terms of automations and, and you know, vision being the next iteration of that, it, it unlocks further markets because now your your margin isn't necessarily the blocker for you. So instead of getting the bringing vision in and just assuming you're going to go from, you know, a 60% margin to a 99% margin, you're going to maybe keep it at the 60%, but you're going to reduce your cost way down. So maybe we, we charge a fraction of what we charge today and we go and unlock newer, bigger markets that add more volume to the top line. And that's how we keep growing. So I'm very excited about what this is going to unlock in, in those markets that we were previously uncompetitive with India as well, a huge one. The, the cost of labor is very cheap. So someone like Swiggy or Zomato, 
they have very cheap pricing for how they actually do a lot of their onboarding today, we can come in there and offer uh, the same, if not even cheaper prices and, and go and win that market as well. So I'm really excited about the markets we can go after that, that are unlocked from from vision-based menu um, services. Well said, well said. I think we could probably talk about this all day. And I also know that there's probably a, more questions that will come out of this. So this might be an interesting one to continue on if for next week, if other people have questions about what we said, we'd love to invite you to, to bring them forward. Um, but we will move on to the next question from Richard. So what is the biggest threat to Woflow? Obvious is AI. We know that. But what about non-obvious? I'll, I'll let you kick this one off, Will. Yeah, I mean, this is a big one that, that Jordan and I think about a lot. We, we generally, when you build a business, you should be focused more on the opportunities, but aware of the threats. Um, and so a lot of what we do is is on the opportunity side where the, you know, the fast moving um, upstart versus um, the incumbents. So we spend a lot of time thinking about the opportunity, but it makes sense to always think as well about the threats. Um, I know that that we, we've asked for the non-obvious options uh, and the questions here, uh, but really like let's let's talk a little bit about AI as the, as the obvious one because it is so vastly important. I think, it's, it's both a threat and an opportunity for us. We definitely see it as more of an opportunity. We just mentioned about the fact that GPT-4 is, is the worst it's ever going to be. This is already going to get us 80% of the way there in terms of instant um, PDF and, and image menu sources. That's awesome. Uh, we see that it's going to continue as an opportunity. I say the non-obvious uh, for us essentially comes down to really not using AI effectively enough. And so what I mean is that we're now in this place where we are a market leader in a lot of the markets that we work in. So when the next generation of the company that we have today comes out and, and there's an, a new upstart that's building very much AI first, we are not an AI first company today by any stretch. We, we have a lot of AI features, but we really do need to Im increase so that we become an AI first uh, sort of company to stay effective in this, in this industry. And so and what I mean by that is we're definitely using AI to build some features. We're doing some cool stuff around tagging. We got new auto menu edits with this, this vision. There's a whole bunch of features that we, we're implementing. But really, I, like what I want to see is everyone should have uh, chat GPT on their computers, everyone from the sales team to the accounting team, everyone in between. I ask my teams all the time kind of how, how they're using these things. Uh, product operations team, I've seen some awesome stuff that that the team have been doing around uh, building their own web crawlers using ChatGPT. So there's a whole bunch of efficiencies that each team can get. We shouldn't just be reliant on thinking that the data science team are going to be the ones solely running AI. This actually should go through the entire business. And that's the biggest threat to me. If we don't use it at every single part of the business throughout all of global operations, through all of our products, all of our different teams, uh, then we can... You know, we're really waiting to be be overtaken by someone that's going to come at this with an AI first approach. So I'd say AI obvious, but I think this is the the non obvious side about we we need not just in our product, we need it in our veins. We need to become AI first with with how any of us think about just doing our general work. Sending an email, use ChatGPT. You know, let's let's keep let's keep going. Let's make sure everyone has an account to to, to try it out and, and use it in a day to day. What about you, John? Yeah, I mean, I totally agree. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to basically just continue on with that. I, I think to me, that is a primary focus. I look back at when we started Woflow and we made fun of the incumbents for just being too slow to be able to do anything. And we're like, oh, we could just whip that up. It's no big deal. Uh, and we did. And, and that's why we're having this podcast as well. We are where we are. I do see the last couple of years, I, I sometimes look at some of the process that, uh, that, that we, that we're going down and, and I'm like, why is this taking so long? It's because we've become the incumbent. And I do see signs of us not being able to move as fast as we used to. Um, and I mean, that's a growing pain that every company, um, every company has, but with the emergence of AI and with the emergence of new companies being able to come in and spin things up really, really fast, that's what scares me the most. Not being able to be as fast and nimble as some of the new companies coming in. 
we have, as I, as I said earlier, we have the distribution, we have the momentum, we have all the customers that love us. Like we are the ones that should be doing it. And we are, but I want to make sure we keep doing it at a pace that our customers accept. And I don't want other people to go around us and be able to show way cooler stuff because it's, you know, one or two people in a basement with absolutely, you know, blank canvas. They don't have thousands of people in their workforce that they have to manage and that they have to, you know, move around in order to make one little thing change. We do. And so we have to figure out a great way to be able to compete with these tiny players and be able to emerge with our products at the same pace as them. And that's a really hard problem to solve. I think our team is doing an absolutely incredible job doing it, but that is something that's always been in the back of my head. It's like, okay, what, what, if, what if a company just started today with two people, how fast could they build this? It's definitely going to be faster than what we can do because we have a lot of, you know, we have a lot of uh, infrastructure, a lot of things already in place where we might have to work against what we've already built, but how do we get there and how do we keep that momentum alive? And that's what, that's to me, what I think is the biggest threat to Woflow. Agreed. I appreciate that. And yeah, thanks, Bonin and Richard being the first couple of questions that we've had through the, the founder AMA. Please use that form to add, ask uh, your, your non-obvious burning questions and we'll make sure we get through as many as we can. Uh, each week on on the Friday flow, but this has been this has been cool to to incorporate some questions. Yeah, I loved it, loved it, awesome. Well, that's all we have for this week. Please give us some feedback. Uh, maybe I'm going to have an outro. Maybe I won't. Maybe this is the outro. We'll see. We'll see what happens in post processing. But Will, thank you so much. Jordan, thank you so much. Will Flowers, thank you so much. Uh, and we will see you next week. Happy Friday. Happy Friday.